well, as Tom mentioned, I uh, would like to improve my French, and uh, just this September I went to Paris uh, to practice some French, in fact. And um, I was walking um, up the stairs because the elevator was broken, and I had this huge bag. It was pretty light, but I was carrying it, and it looked like I was, you know, carrying a very heavy load. And out of a sudden, somebody taps me behind the shoulder and says, "Peux je vous aider?" which means, can I help you, grabs my bag and just rushes off upstairs. And I'm like, wait a minute, that's my bag, you're stealing it. <laughs> of course, um, that gentleman was helping. And I forgot that um, Frenchmen are very, very gallant. Not to discourage our men, everybody's gallant, but I just, I was in the mindset of independence for a very long time. Uh, maybe because of the work style, maybe because of just uh, things I've been reading and learning. Um, but I forgot about it. And so my point of view was that he was supposed to let me carry that bag. But as I went upstairs and, you know, he just said, you know, have a good day and rushed off. And I just said, oh, thank you. And went on with my day. I was laughing at myself. I stood there and I was just laughing. I was. Um, that happened to me three times throughout my trip, so French men are indeed gallant. Um, but what it helped me think about is um, that we sometimes focus so much on our differences and, you know, I have to be independent, they should understand that, they should realize that. Um, and one of the things that helped me recently, thanks to Tom, um, I've attended a seminar by John Gray, the author of Men are from Mars and women are from Venus. I'm sure you've heard about him. And he, he's been in Almaty this Sunday. Um, many lessons learned and I was actually interested after what, this incident. I was just curious what exactly those differences are and whether we should embrace them or just move our separate ways and, you know, turn in our planets. Um, I've learned a lot of things and I initially went there with a very narrow mind. I, my mind was not open because I disagreed with a lot of his points of view, views uh, and his views. His assertions uh, were often irritating to me simply because they focused on our differences. Uh, but I've learned a few tips, I, I'll share one, that you should always uh, try to have more in your life, more success, more... Um, warmth in your relationships, but you should um, focus, also remember to love what you already have. Great point, I agree with that, but overall, even the title of his book focuses on the differences between men and women. And um, sometimes there are cultural differences, like French men and, you know, um, other men. <laughs> so, um, I uh, thought about it for a while and I realized, you know, what helps us develop is actually valuing those differences. And I've also had a training um, that I received from Stephen Covey. I'm sure you've heard about a book called Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Um, one of the key habits that he has uh, that, I, that resonated with me was the listening skill. And you would think this is so easy. I mean, you learn listening as a kid. You learn how to, you know, imitate uh, other people. Um, but his skill is all about how do we bring people together. That's communication skill. And the basic step in communication is listening to another person. But what's interesting is that we're so firmly tied to our points of views that is, it's apparently very difficult for us to hear another person, another point of view, let alone accept it, you know? That gallant Frenchman, little did he know that I was cursing him half of the way up, <laughs> thinking he's stealing my bag. But um, listening could be of two types. One is autobiographical listening, as Mr. Covey called it, and another one is called uh, empathic listening. So apparently when you're listening from the autobiographical perspective, you make your assertions from your background, from your values, from your past. You know, you're talking to a teenage boy and you say, hey, in my days, this is how I've done it. 
and the little boy is growing and he thinks, well, I want to do it differently. But you're imposing your point of view on that kid. Uh, Mr. Covey also said, also said that insecure people either clone other people or they try to mold them into thinking their way. That's insecure people. And we don't want to be insecure, right? Or we, don't, we, don't, we want to grow together. So we want to learn the other point of view. We want to understand it better. Um, there was also something he mentioned about differences between men and women, that women are better communicators. I'm sorry for <laughs> squeezing it in there, but apparently that comes from anthropology, because as women had their babies, this little creature that they had in their cradle and at their hands, it would keep crying and they wouldn't understand what they're saying. So there was a lot of nonverbal communication, intuitive communication that they had to develop with time. So now they know how to communicate because this baby's crying because he's, he's, it's hungry, it's, uh, it's unhappy, it's uh, sick. While men are geared towards action, towards hunting, towards um, fixing things, and you know, Mr. Gray actually, Olga was there as well, Mr. Gray said that men are like firefighters. What do they do all the day before the, there's fire? They do nothing. Oh wait, they watch TV, switch the channels, <laughs> maybe they do some weightlifting to, you know, improve their muscles, and then there's an emergency. They pull on their firefighter pants, the fire, fire, firefighter hat, and off they go to save the world, to save our lives. Great job. We could listen to each other and let men be gallant, have them reach their goals, and let us have our successes at work and our successes in relationships. But the key is here that we have to listen to each other, whether it's men or women, uh, or it's another person, um, or it's a child. So differences could be diff uh, generational, that could be gender, they could be cross-cultural. And to conclude this very small speech about listening skills and remembering to respect uh, the point of view of other people. This is actually uh, Mr. Kavi's personal example that uh, started this resonation. Um, one, one day he was very tired leaving work. Um, he boarded his, the metro stations, um, the metro train, sorry. He went to the, into the train, he sat down very tired he had a very busy day training other people, sharing his wisdom. Other people were reading a newspaper, reading a book. There were no iPhones or Samsung Galaxies around in his time. And out of a sudden, there comes a man with two kids. One is eight, one is ten. And this man is neither sad nor happy. He's just, he doesn't have any emotion. He sits down across from Mr. Kavi. And the kids start playing around very loudly, very aggressively, running around the train, disturbing other passengers. And Mr. Kavi got so angry at this man, at the father of the kids, because he was just not you know, paying attention to the fact that the kids are so irritatingly loud. And he said, excuse me, sir, could you ask your kids to calm down? The man looks up at Mr. Kavi and he says, Oh, I guess you're right. Um, I, I should ask them to calm down, but I, their mother ju died just an hour ago and we're back from the hospital, we're going home, and I guess they just don't know how to react to this tragedy. Neither can I. And you can imagine that after this, there wasn't a day where Mr. Kavi would not um, get another person give another person a chance to express their point of view. So, um, if you want to have a happier life, healthier relationships, I would encourage you to learn from these experiences and to learn to listen to another per point of view, to another person's um, position and opinion. We can value our differences instead of rejecting them, instead of tolerating our differences. And we should always be connected to our hearts. Thank you.